Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with radicals. We have x to the power square root of x equals 10 to the power 20. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. So, whenever you get an equation like this, you want to bring down the variable exponent, right? Obviously, you don't want to leave it there. So let's go ahead and natural log both sides. Natural log is ln, which is base e, x to the power root x, ln 10 to the power 20. So they're equal, right? Now, since we log both sides, we can go ahead and, you know, move the exponents to the front. That will become square root of x ln x. And on the right hand side, we're going to get 20 times ln 10. Now, it would be nice if we had a one-to-one -one correspondence, such as square root of x is 20, which implies x equals 400, and x equals 10, which doesn't imply x equals 400. And obviously, these results are conflicting each other. So there's a contradiction. Therefore, we can't really do this directly. We're going to do this indirectly, but let's go ahead and take a look at something else. First of all, one of the things that I want you to think about is we have a domain, right? Since we have uh, we ln both sides, we have uh, we have the requirement x greater than zero, but we also have the square root of x even before we ln both sides. Square because of square root of x, x needs to be greater than or equal to zero. But if x is equal to zero, we're going to get zero to the power zero, and that's definitely not going to give us ten to the power twenty. Some people claim it's one. I don't think it's one. It's indeterminate. But again. Uh, there's a huge argument about that. So x needs to be positive. That's nice. Because when we look at it from a functional standpoint, that's going to be important. Okay? So here's what we're going to do next. We're going to take a look at square root of x times ln x as a function. And then we'll try to find its maxima or minima and see how it behaves. Okay? So let's go ahead and differentiate this function using product rule. The derivative of square root of x, which is 1 over square root of x. That's something you usually memorize if you're taking calculus because it's um, it's a good shortcut. But if you didn't know it, you can definitely write this as x to the power 1 half. And then use the power rule. And remember the power rule with x to the power n. You bring the 1 half to the front and then reduce the power by 1, which makes it negative 1 half. And this becomes 1 over square root of x multiplied by 1 half becomes 1 over 2 times the square root of x. You see, it's a pretty good shortcut. Times the second function plus the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, times the first function, which is square root of x. All right, let's go ahead and erase this. We don't want to get confused. And now, let's simplify the derivative. I can basically write this as ln x over 2 square root of x. And here, I can write this as square root of x over x. I'm going to make a common denominator. There's a couple ways to go about it. I can multiply this by square root of x and this by 2. That's probably going to be one way to do it. Another way to do it is just multiply by root x or 2 root x. Actually, 2 root x. And then simplify this. How? So at the bottom, uh, obviously this, these two are going to give us x. So we can go ahead and cancel this out and we end up with 2 square root of x. So that gives us ln x plus 2 divided by 2 square root of x. If you use the other method, that would give you the exact same thing, but you would have to simplify a little bit. You'd probably have to take out a square root of x, and square root of x uh, obviously would not be 0. Now, if you set the derivative, that's usually the general rule. You differentiate a function if it's differentiable, of course, and then set the derivative equal to 0. Now, derivative being equal to 0 usually means that there's a horizontal tangent, and horizontal tangent means the function has a maxima or minima at a point. Of course, it, that's not always the case because the second derivative can also be zero at the point, which can give us an inflection point. But we'll make a table and we'll settle this. So from here, we get ln x equals negative 2. And by using the base e, we get x equals e to the power negative 2, which is 1 over e squared. That's a small number, like a fraction. And our function, uh, that's a critical point for our function. Let's go ahead and make a table. And our table is going to look like follows. Uh, we're going to have a row for x. We're going to have a row for f prime. And we're going to have a row for f. 
and then uh, whatever makes the derivative zero is one over e squared that's going to be our root for the derivative row and then depending on how f prime uh, takes positive and negative values uh, we're going to conclude uh, on f so notice that ln x plus 2 is going to be positive if x is less than 1 over e squared and negative if x is so you can kind of think about it this way if x is equal to 1 for example right ln n ln 1 is 0 so you're going to have a positive value and 1 actually falls here look at that so we're kind of testing a value which means our derivative is going to be positive in this region and negative in that region which means that our function is going to decrease on the interval negative infinity to 1 over e squared and on the interval 1 over e squared to infinity it is going to increase making a minimum at x equals 1 over e squared make sense great so our function is going to look like uh, something that I'm going to show you the graph later on but basically this tells us that we may have more than one solution because you kind of have a function that decreases and then increases and we're setting that equal to what 20 ln 10 but guess what ln 10 is greater than 1 20 ln 10 is going to be greater than 20 that's going to be a really large value so we kind of need to think about could we have a single solution because our graph might be like this you know it could go on forever like this but then the horizontal line will only, only intersect at a single point so that's something to think about and how do we find that we could actually find if there's more than one solution by looking at where this function is going to have the minimum where the start so on and so forth but remember we said that x must be positive so we don't even have a value for zero but let's go ahead and rewrite the formula the function square root of x ln x and if you look at it uh, kind of like uh, between um, zero is going to be undefined but what happens between zero and one over e squared right that's going to be an important value to look at because our function is going to have a minimum at that point but what is the value of the function at that point let's go ahead and evaluate f of one over e squared that's going to give us the square root of one over e squared which is going to be one over e multiply by ln one over e squared which is negative two so this is going to be negative two over e which is actually a negative value so we're going to have a negative value here and then our function is not defined at zero so it's probably going to be starting somewhere i don't know let's just suppose it starts at zero zero and then our function is going to go like this and then like that right probably but notice that the y value we're talking about here is really large at least it's positive therefore there's no way it can intersect the graph at more than one point if we had a horizontal line whose y value was negative between actually uh, this is going to be a negative 2 over e if you had a y value that is between negative 2 over e and 0 it would have two solutions but in this case we have a single solution so let's go ahead and look at this problem from uh, a one-to-one -one correspondence standpoint uh, so that we can find the x directly okay so this is equal to 20 ln 10 and notice that we weren't able to match up the x's because x is not 10 okay that makes sense one of the things I can do is I can kind of split it up and write it as 2 times 10 times ln 10 and then one of these has to move to become a power here so let's go ahead and look at both options so that way you can be com uh, confident that you got it let's go ahead and move the 10 that's going to give me 2 times ln 10 to the 10th power and this is going to be square root of x ln x now if square root of x is equal to 2 that means x is 4 but that's not going to work with this because x can't be that large you see what I'm saying moving the 10 is was not a good idea now let's go ahead and try moving the 2 so now if you move the 2 to the front you're going to get 10 ln 10 squared which is 10 ln 100 and that actually matches up with what we have square root of x equals 10 implies x equals 100 that's exactly what we have so x equals 100 is a solution and it is the only solution as we've seen why our graph intersects now here's another stuff uh, something to talk about now starting with this point square root of x ln x equals uh, 20 ln 10 was that the value 20 ln 10 and then 
we can go ahead and actually use Lambert's W function here. But one thing we have to do is first multiply both sides by one half. Let's go ahead and do it because that's going to bring the power that I need. So that's going to become square root of x times ln square root of x equals 10 ln 10, and this is going to look good. And now we can go ahead and write this as ln square root of x times e to the power ln square root of x, because that's what square root of x is, equals ln 10 times e to the power ln 10. And then you can use Lambert's W function on both sides, and guess what's going to happen? This is going to turn into ln square root of x because t e to the t turns into t, remember? And it's going to turn into ln 10, and you'll get x equals 100 again. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish up. Like I told you earlier, when you draw the line, you're going to have a single point of intersection. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.